This month we continue with the Jedi Academy trilogy with the second installment of the series. Because last time I already covered the backstory and these three books were all kind of written together, I'm going to hold off on the backstory for this installment. Following not long after the events of Jedi Search, Luke Skywalker has opened the Jedi Prexium, not Academy, in spite of the title of the series, in the old rebel base on Yavin 4. Luke's students have expanded by those he accrued in the last book, including Dorsk 81, a person from a planet of clones who, due to a ge genetic abnormality, is force sensitive, and Tion, a musician. Luke has been training his students with the assistance of Voto Bosses of Holocron, which Luke and Leia retrieved from the possession of Emperor Palpatine's clone in Dark Empire. However, all is not well. Yavin 4 is haunted by the forced ghost of one of the last Dark Lords of the Sith, Exar Kun, and he's trying to seduce Luke's students over to the dark side, starting with Gantoris. Meanwhile, the Imperial Governor of Caridia has been taking steps to undermine the Republic, having used cybernetics to turn Admiral Akbar's mechanic into a sleeper agent for the Empire. Akbar's mechanic sabotaged Akbar's personal two-person B-Wing before Akbar took himself and Senator Organa Solo to a diplomatic meeting, causing a crash. Both survived, but it cr led to a major diplomatic incident, which forced Akbar to retire. On Akbar's return trip to Mont Calamari after announcing his retirement to the New Republic Council, he stops by the planet where Han and Leia's youngest child, Anakin, is being kept safe with Winter and a tracking device planted by Akbar's mechanic sends that information to the Empire. Meanwhile, back on Coruscant, Mon Mothma is dying of a mysterious unknown disease, and this has forced her to push more and more responsibilities onto Leia. Kwai Zux, the non-human designer of the Sun Crusher, who helped Kip Duran, Lando, and Han escape the Mon installation with that weapon, is now under the protection of Wedge Antilles, and is working with their public to reverse-engineer the weapon so they can successfully destroy the damned thing. After much deliberation, the decision is made to dump the Sun Crusher into Yavin 4. The other major plot thread is related to Admiral Dalla. Her fleet, reduced to three Star Destroyers, which is nothing to seize at, but not enough to actually claim any territory, sets out on what can best be described as a terrorist campaign. Utterly annihilating the new settlement made for Gantoros' people on Dantooine, and killing their public engineer is sent to set up the base, murdering everyone at the outpost. Not just combatants, but civilians as well. Her fleet then goes to attack Mon Calamari, only to run into a problem. Dala was trained by Grand Moff Tarkin, and he, she knows everything he did, and built her tactical style, for lack of a better term, based on his. However, Akbar also studied under Tarkin when he was Tarkin's slave, and in particular dedicated his efforts to finding weaknesses and counters to Tarkin's tactics. And he's on Mon Calamari when she attacks, while Leia and the Mon Calamari Republic representative, Klegal, are trying to persuade him to rejoin their public council. Leia and Klegal are able to get Akbar to leave the defense and turn Dala's tactics against her, 
in sort. Bravo. You magnificent bastard, I read your book! This comes to a head when Kipduron is brought to the Prexium. Exar couldn't have failed to seduce Kentaurus when the energy of the dark side burned him alive from the inside out. He is much more successful at luring Kip Duran over to the dark side. Duran steals the information on how to operate the Sun Crusher from Kwai Zux's mind, giving her partial amnesia in the process, and retrieves the Sun Crusher from the depths of Yevon 4 with the Force. When Luke tries to stop him, Duran basically yanks Luke's soul from his body, leaving him comatose. Duran then heads to the nebula where Dala's remaining Star Destroyers are in hiding, using an array of torpedoes to cause a chain reaction in the stars in the nebula to destroy Dala's ships. Finally, as the book ends, Kip Duran sets off for Caridia to rescue his brother, who was sent there while Kip was sent to Kessel with their parents. We get our first information on the social structure of Mon Calamari society, along with meeting our first female Mon Calamari, Hagal, and with this we get some description of the sexual dimorphism of Mon Calamari. We get the name of the hammerhead species from the Mos Eisley Cantina for the first time in the novels, the Athorians, and the name of the one present there, Moma Nadon. We learn that training and being a Jedi is not just a matter of physical and mental conditioning, as we saw in Dagobah, but also psychological condition, as Bodo ba Bodo Boss's recommended training regimen includes a lot of stories of historical Jedi as parables. We learn that there is a population of former Imperial and Republic bureaucrats living in the lower levels of Coruscant, forced into hiding because of their actions against Palpatine and the Empire, and they apparently never emerged in the years since the Battle of Endor, including during the Battle of Coruscant in the events of Dark Empire. Luke is very concerned that his students might go down the dark path, much as Anakin did with Obi-Wan. Unlike New Universally Luke, Legends Luke does not decide to use force against Kip Duran until Duran has already used force against his fellow students, although by the time that Duran is, starts actively using force, no pun intended, Duran has joined forces with Exar Kun. Leia has been forced to take on more responsibilities in the Republic due to Mon Mothma's illness. Han ends up trading the Falcon back and forth with Lando over games of Sabak in a plot that pretty much goes nowhere and is basically based around Han being immature. Chewbacca is the twins' big furry babysitter, along with C-3PO, who was also responsible for helping take care of the twins, and is really bad at being a storyteller, in spite of what ha the events of Return of the Jedi, and is also bad at getting the twins to behave themselves. Admiral Akbar is established as having been Tarkin's slave. This had previously been established in materials for the RPG, but this hadn't been brought into the expanded universe books and comics before. Kip Duran is turned to the dark side in a manner not too dissimilar how Anakin's path would go in the prequel trilogy. Mara Jade comes to the Praxium to train under Luke, but ends up being impatient with Luke's training methods, as does Kip Duran, but Mara can't leave because Kip steals her Z-95 headhunter. Wedge and Tilly's is falling in love with Kui Zux, but by the time they come to terms with their feelings for each other, Kip has mind whammied Kui Zux, giving her amnesia. Admiral Dala eschews joining any particular faction of the Imperial Remnant, instead choosing to start her own and sending her fleet on a terrorist campaign against the Republic, only to run into the setbacks of fighting a military commander who specialized in countering Imperial tactics and having one of her own superweapons turned against her. Mon Mothma is currently dying of a mysterious illness. Considering the marketing for the story mode for Battlefront 2 focused on the Empire because even the Empire had heroes too, I appreciate Kevin J. Anderson back in the day saying, no, the Empire are a bunch of evil freaking bastards. However, this does mean that it doesn't particularly make sense for the Republic to bring Dala on board as the commander of the Republic Navy in the New Jedi, in the New Jedi Order era, but we'll dive into that what the fuckery when we come to it. Jedi Academy series gets a lot of crap, and some of that's deserved, but there's some solid material right here in the middle. 
Let's get the crap out of the way first, though. The whole thing with Lando and Han and the Falcon goes almost nowhere. Before this book, they'd pretty much gotten the whole I won the Falcon clean, no, you cheated thing out of the way, and then Anderson digs it back up again for a plot beat that goes nowhere and accomplishes nothing. That said, Anderson makes a, does a good job of writing villains who make bad decisions for logical reasons. Dahl hasn't been keeping up with the past 10 plus years of tactical developments because she's been stuck at the mall entirely incommunicado. That said, if she'd stuck the periphery, she could have made this whole thing work. The Republic Navy would have been spread thin, hunting down her ships, and the Republic member worlds would have been pissed that no one could have protected them. Instead, she got ambitious and decided to go after Mon Calamari, thinking it was a soft target. Not realizing that probably the one Republic Admiral who knew who her mentor as well, if not better, than she did, would be commanding the defenses. Kip Duran's fall is a more organic flow to it than Anakin's, probably because it's more rapid. Duran is impatient and upset because there's still the question of whether his brother is still alive. Additionally, he's older than Anakin was when we see him brought into the Jedi Order, while still having a degree of baggage there, so the worry about being too old works better here. Kip Duran's mindset and worldview has been dramatically shaped by his incarceration on Kessel, along with all the potential options being laid before him with his freedom. So, on the one hand, mentally he's become somewhat set, somewhat inflexible in his ways. So, the objection makes sense. By a certain point in a person's life, they've you become the person you are. You become less malleable as a human being. Um... And so, I mean, you can still undergo social change. You can still undergo psychological change. People who are alcoholics are able to undergo the force of will, not the force of will, but to take the psychological and mental effort to come to get clean, even though then it becomes a sustained thing that they have to work on for the rest of their lives. And there's the whole thing of people getting born again and that sort of thing. Um, but it's still... It's a big hurdle that it, that you have to overcome, and that's something which Luke would have had to deal with, with Kip Duran and training them. The book's climax also has some excellent visuals, with Luke and Kip having their confrontation from the temple, with Kip having retrieved the Sun Crusher from Yavin 4, and fighting Luke alongside the visible spirit of Exar Kun. Next book I'll be covering for the Star Wars Expanded Universe will be the next installments of Tales of the Jedi, The Freedom Nad Uprising, and Dark Lords of the Sith. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something in particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.